Welcome to The Car Guys, and this week, the episode you have all been waiting for. That's right, I'm going to reveal the whole series of events that led me to sell my Ferrari F40. What it was going to be replaced with, why it hasn't happened yet, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can't handle the truth! So sit back, strap in, let's get started. Yes, I had an F40 in my collection, and yes, I sold it. Many of you assumed I had a very good reason for this, and at the time, I did. But then things changed, and the original plan was scrapped. Now, to tell you this story properly this week, I'm going to have to tell you about how I bought the F40 in the first place. What was it like owning? What was its history? Why was I happy to sell it? And what was it going to be replaced with? Did I always want an F40? Well, yes, of course I did. I had one on my bedroom wall next to my Lamborghini Countach picture, and it was a case of one day you will be mine. The F40 was built to celebrate Ferrari's 40th birthday, and it is a race car for the road with a raw turbocharged engine and a purposefully uncompromising Pininfarina composite body. The front and rear end can be opened up to reveal the whole inner structure of the car, as seen here. Isn't that fabulous? All F40s were originally red and left-hand drive manual cars, and featured tubular wishbone suspension, cross-drilled ventilated disc brakes, and a 90-degree V8 2.9-litre turbocharged engine that put out 478 brake horsepower at 7,000 RPM. 0-60, 4.1 seconds. Top speed, 201 miles an hour. That's 324 kilometers an hour. Roll on 25 years and I was in a position to buy one. It was the second Ferrari after, of course, my beloved 355 Spider. I first saw F40 JTO in the Meridian Modena showroom in late April 2013. It was actually the first F40 I had ever seen for sale in an actual showroom. Of course, I had lusted after them at car shows, but here was a perfect example resting on the cool white tiles of my local Ferrari dealer. And it had a price tag of just under £500,000, which was the same price as my house. If you want to hear about the full buying story of my F40, I did include it in the video when I sold the car back in March 2019. So check it out right here. The 5th of May 2013 was the day that I actually bought my F40 from Meridian Modena. For many people, including myself, the greatest supercar of them all. This is me actually buying the car. Yes, I'm signing the papers and spending nearly half a million quid. I owned this F40 for six years and I took it on many different driving adventures and events and loved every minute of it. It truly is a unique driving experience and a car that helped define the car guy's garage in those early days. Is there a downside to F40 ownership? To be honest, not a great deal. It wasn't expensive to service, though some of the parts are becoming a lot more scarce these days. The turbos can be reconditioned, and I had an alternator go once, which led to a flat battery. But apart from that, it was faultless. Obviously, the bladder fuel tanks need to be replaced every 10 years, which fortunately had just been done when I bought the car. And I'm told they're a little bit more expensive now than the £9,000 that they used to be. The car generally started first time after a bit of cranking, ran well, and when you're driving it, it's surprising how small it feels around you on UK roads. But the biggest satisfaction was just looking at it in the garage. It's a stunning and unique looking car that makes any garage sing with joy. And then in 2019, it all ended. I rashly decided to sell it to fund another project. And also, in truth, because I had had my fun and I wanted some new experiences. It may be a unique driving experience, 
but it's not a unique owning experience because they built over 1,300 of them. So if you ever need to get an F40, generally, there's always one around. So one day in February 2019, I picked up the phone to a friend of mine and agreed a deal. And I had one last drive through the new forest to Meridian Modena, where it was being prepared for sale. What's happened to it since? Well, I'm sad to say that it remained in a private collection for a relatively short amount of time and then put up for sale again. And fairly recently, it sold. So why the hell did I sell an F40? What possible reason could there have been and why have I been so secretive about it? Well, the short version is I needed the money for a deposit on a new car. Was it the Porsche Carrera GT? No. Was it the Gordon Murray T50? No. Was it a Koenigsegg Jesko? No. Was it an F50? No. Was it the 288 GTO? No. It was a new Ferrari, one that was limited edition, very special and very expensive. I was incredibly excited to be getting a Monza SP2. Yes, I was offered the first ever Icona car from Ferrari, an incredible two-seater V12 open-topped windscreenless roadster, one of the most exciting cars ever to wear, the prancing horse. That's the reason why I sold my F40, was because I needed the money to fund a Monza SP2, one of the most beautiful modern Ferraris and the first of Ferrari's Icona series. And if you remember, there was a little clue earlier on where I got to drive the Monza at the Fiorano test track during the launch event for the 812 GTS and F8 Spider. And at the Finale Mondiale event at Mugello, I was actually fitted up for the unique racing suit and helmet. This is me wearing it, looking like a total burk. There is no doubt that it would have been the pinnacle of the car guy's collection. A bona fide showstopper, and I think a worthy successor to the F40. But what do you think? Especially since, if you remember, I cancelled the order on my 812 Superfast, on which the Monza is based. So where is it? Well, that's where it all goes wrong. It all goes wrong. To be honest, the purchase price of north of £1.6 million was weighing heavy on my mind. I'd already paid a deposit of 500000 and there was still £1.1 million to go. Even more so with options. I realised that with everything going on in my life, it would be impossible to fund this car successfully. And you know me, I tend not to go for debt finance. In the end, I think I was just fooling myself that it could ever actually happen and getting caught up in the fantasy of being an Icona customer and a real Ferrari VIP. I spent a number of months deliberating whether or not I could possibly make the sums work. And then in June 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, I regrettably had to cancel the car and take on the chin any impact with my relationship with Ferrari. I moped for days, but it was the right decision for a number of reasons. And fortunately, thanks to my long-standing relationship with the folks at Ferrari, they understand. So now you know, the F40 replacement was the Monza SP2. So now I've got no Monza, no F40, and no TDF, come to think of it. Will I ever own another new Ferrari? Well, Maybe, but we'll save that for later. Will I own another F40? Well, to be honest, one day, yes, I'm sure I will. There's no way that I can't have it in my life again at some point. After all, I'm still relatively young. It's just too special a car not to have back at some point. So there you go, guys. That's it. Now you know the full story. If you like what we're doing on the car, guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.